Hey guys, this is Justin. I have something very special to share with you guys today. My friend Night Dox is one of the best and most impressive creators on the platform. He's recently started a new lore channel and I'll be sharing his first video with you guys today. I want you guys also to do me a huge favor. He's at about a thousand subscribers now and we've got to blow those numbers up. I promise there are no Elden Ring lore videos this high quality on YouTube aside from his. I'm going to link to the second video on his channel. Go watch that after you watch this one and toss a subscription. Let's roll it. Upon reaching Landell, the Tarnished reaches a peculiar location within the city. Upon entering, it feels... familiar. To anyone who's been to the Round Table Hold. Everything is simultaneously exactly where it should be. But only the ghost of what once was remains. Where Gideon would spend hours poring over books in the library, there's only emptiness, where Hugh would be spending hours smithing away, there's only silence. To get a better idea of what this place was and why it looks exactly like the round table hold, we need only enter the doors to the chamber where we would normally find Enya and the two fingers. Where the two fingers would normally be, we find a new weapon, the coated sword. According to the description of the Coded Sword, we find that the original Round Table Hold, long abandoned after the Shattering, was a gathering place for Queen Merica's champions. You see, the Round Table Hold that we visit that serves as a base of operations for the Tarnished, who seek to become the Elden Lord, is possibly an illusion created by Queen Merica. For punishment upon shattering the Elden Ring, Queen Merica was physically imprisoned within the Erd Tree by the Elden Beast on behalf of the Greater Will, and a wall of impenetrable thorns served to seal her inside. Unfortunately, upon approaching the thorns were turned away, but although this is speculation on my part, I believe that the Round Table Hold that we have been visiting since near the beginning of the game is located within the Erd Tree. Evidence of this is that upon igniting the Erd Tree at the Giant's Forge, we see that the Erd Tree itself is lit aflame. Nothing else, even around the capital city, seems to be in flames. However, upon visiting the Round Table Hold, we find that the flames engulf the entire location, yet no one seems concerned or harmed by the fire. This, to me, is strong evidence that not only is the Round Table Hold an illusion, it is located outside of physical space, possibly within the mind of Queen Merica herself. As Queen Merica was imprisoned within the Erd Tree, she retained her godhood status and used the power she held to create a copy of the Round Table Hold within her mind. As the Tarnished have long been sent to the land beyond the fog, laying dead and without grace, they were the perfect champions that Merica could call upon to free her from the grasps of the Erd Tree and the Elden Beast. Blessing the Tarnished with grace for the first time since the days of Horalu, the Tarnished rise from death and are called back to the lands between, all of whom with the goal of rising to become the new Elden Lord. So the Round Table hold. Once the gathering place of Merica's champions of old is restored to partial glory, but only as it exists within the mind of Queen Merica. Within this new round table hold, she assembles not only the tarnished, but she also sends her servant, or more accurately, slave, an old misbegotten blacksmith named Master Hugh. Through several lines of dialogue, we learn a little about Master Hugh and his relationship to Queen Merica. Upon approaching Hugh, we surreptitiously end up eavesdropping on Hugh's prayers to Queen Merica. Oh, your divinity, have mercy and grant me forgiveness. The road is yet long, a god is not easily felled. But one day without fail, you will have your wish. So please grant me forgiveness, Queen Merica. So here's what we can assume from this little bit of dialogue. At some point, Hugh wronged Merica in a grave way, and the fact that he is a prisoner in chains means that being imprisoned in the Round Table Hold was his punishment. 
Let's continue on to another line of dialogue we end up eavesdropping as Hugh labors away. No, 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 no. I need to do better than this. This will never kill a god. I can do better than this. It needs to slay a bloody god. Combined with the details we heard in his prayer earlier, we can deduce that the goal of Queen Merica was that Hugh's atonement for such a grievous sin against her was to be imprisoned in the round table hold and smith weapons until one was sufficiently strong to kill a god. The Elden Beast, in fact. In this task, Hugh is tireless, never resting, as the one way for him to be free of his chains is to create the weapon that eventually frees his master, whose imprisonment Hugh played some part in. The possibility that Hugh played a role in the shattering or the imprisonment of Queen Merica is pure speculation on my part. I personally don't believe he had the ability to take part in the shattering, as he is not a god or a demigod that we know of. However, I do wonder, if Queen Merica was bold enough to shatter the Elden Ring, I feel like she, in a sense of self-preservation, would have felt that there was a way she could get away with it without drawing the ire of the Greater Will. But since the Greater Will did indeed discover what she had done, I do wonder how they discovered that it was her, and if Hugh played a role in that. From what I can gather about Hugh's personality, he's very blunt, matter of fact, and seems to take comfort in the predictable nature of order around him. And since Merica's shattering of the Elden Ring brought so much chaos to his life and all the lives of the lands between, we could deduce a strong motivation Hugh would have for turning on his master beyond the simple fact that he was a slave in chains under her control. One more possibility for Hugh's imprisonment. And this is the one that I find more likely than the others that I've mentioned. When Ronnie's assassins killed Godwin the Golden, Ronnie took a fragment of the Rune of Death that was infused in Malekith's Black Blade to create the Black Knives used to slay a demigod. In order to create these weapons, she would have needed a smith. And who else would she have turned to, to create such a weapon, other than a smith like Hugh, who was the slave and smith of her own mother, Queen Merica? So, seemingly ripped of his characteristic wings he would have had as a misbegotten, and placed in chains, he would serve in the round table hold, serving Queen Merica, whom he both fears and respects, until the day can finally come where he is able to atone for his sins against her. So if the round table hold is an illusion within the mind of Queen Merica, why is it that we can still access the round table hold after defeating her at the end of the game? To answer that, we have to explore the concept of death and how it behaves within the world of Elden Ring. Because the rune of death was removed from the Elden Ring itself, when someone dies, they are hewn within the Erd Tree, becoming a part of the Elden Ring itself, to be born anew, as they have simply died in body, but not soul. Remember that the soul of each and every living thing in the lands between take the form of runes, tiny shards of the Elden Ring that are released upon the body's death. Thus, as Merica is already located within the Erd Tree, and has not been slain by the power of the Rune of Death, as Luke Skywalker says, No one's ever really gone. Again, the exception to that is when someone is slain by the power of the Rune of Death, otherwise called Destined Death. An example of this is when Ronnie's assassins used blades infused with the power of the Rune of Death to slay Godwin the Golden before the events of the game itself. Because the power of Destined Death was unleashed from these blades, the demigod was slain both in body and soul, and his essence was not returned to the Erd Tree to be born anew like he otherwise would have been. 
because a fragment of the Rune of Death, now imbued into Malekith's black blade, had been stolen, Malekith then hid the blade within himself to ensure that no one could ever steal a part of destined death again, only bringing it back out when he would call on it in his battle against our tarnished character. Let me know in the comments if there's other topics within Elden Ring lore that you'd like to know more about. And be sure to check out my main channel, Night Docs, for deep dives into fascinating mysteries. Special thanks to Eckhart's Ladder for having me on.